Okay, I'm trying to invite people. How do you put the translator on this? Oh, here we are. No, no, I don't know how to. There, man. Oh, dude, what are you doing?
to love them face. It's for Francesca. She has to send a photo. I don't like that. Tesco, no sweetie pie. I am the one. Good evening. Hey, how's it going? Hey, good. How are you doing, Gar? Thanks for uh, taking good. my uh, taking my uh, uh, my question. Yeah, 
Yeah, no problem. I'm actually driving here too right now. <laughs> Let me turn my camera on. Yeah. So where are you located? Uh, Tacoma, Washington. Washington. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, where are you located at? Uh, I am down here in Florida. Awesome. My um the 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 um the person that 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 sent me a booking request is coming from Florida flying into Seattle and um they're 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 doing a trip all the way down to, to LA so that's why that's what prompted me to to send that question because again it's something that I ain't never dealt with so I was hoping to get you know a, a chance to, to 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 pick somebody's brain that that's that's done it before gotcha okay so yeah basically it's a one-way rental that they want to do yep and they want to <clears throat> um so today is what January 26th when's their rental inquiry for uh April April 11th to the 22nd Oh perfect okay so you got plenty of time Yeah 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 okay. I got I got the booking request uh, last night um and I responded to the to the gentleman and uh, um I told him that I you know to give me at least the end of the day today to kind of consider all of my options um just so that we can we can figure out everything that comes along with doing a one way rental yeah yep that makes sense well the cool thing about this being that it's so far out is there's a company you can use called i muva um I so okay. yeah so i m o o v a dot com and uh it's really cool because basically you you list it on their website and uh -huh. they charge the renter a dollar a day um and and that's how they make their money they don't really you know charge much so what you would do is you would go put your rv on imova and say hey i need it to go from you know wherever the renters are ending their journey uh -huh. to wherever you need it to go to back to you in washington and then you give them x amount of days to do that and then typically what we do is we have them pay for insurance okay. you know so we'll um we're a dealer so we have you know different setup for insurance uh, that could be another question i could answer for you but um yeah so basically you would just put it on their website i needed to go from a to b i'll give you five days to do that and you just pay for the insurance cost um <clears throat> and it, usually it goes pretty quick usually find renters pretty quick because for them it's like a free one-way trip uh-huh and people love to do it so we move them all around the country like that all the time because people just jump on that work remotely and they're like oh hey honey you want to go from florida to washington you know april uh -huh. 1st to the 5th and yep sure and they book it um so that being that it's so far out that would be a real simple solution for you especially that it's coming from florida yeah. i would i highly doubt and it's you know in springish time i highly doubt that you would uh have a hard time finding somebody to jump right on that Okay, so if that would be a different booking outside of the the because right now I'm, I'm I'm utilizing outdoorsy, um, so that would be a, a, a separate booking from that, correct? Yeah, so you could uh, you would book it separately. <clears throat> what you could do, um, and actually I could help you. I'm assuming you just have the one RV. Yeah, I only got one RV. Yes. Okay, maybe what we could do and this would kind of help me to test this theory too. We have our dealer software that's through Outdoorsy. It's called Wheelbase. Okay. Um, but you have to have multiple units to, to qualify for it. Mm -hmm. But it, it gives us the capability to go in and just add insurance and different things like that. So I'd be willing to do that for you. We could go in, create a quote for just the insurance. Um, uh -huh. and run your renter through there get them verified all that stuff you collect your security deposit um for the imova booking and then what you could do on the other side of that to really protect yourself because people are used to paying you know for getting the unit back you know to its owner you would uh -huh. put together a charge for that renter 
um, you know, let's say, I don't know, somewhere around, you know, 35 cents a mile or 55 cents a mile to get that unit back to you. And that would cover you in case for some reason something goes horribly wrong and all of a sudden your RV stuck in Florida and you got to jump on a plane and get down and get it, and bring it back up. Uh -huh. um, then you would, you know, have the compensation in place for doing that, the fuel and the airfare and all that. Mm, okay. Uh, but I highly doubt that you wouldn't find somebody that would jump on that iMova booking because that would be a fun trip for somebody. Uh -huh. And uh, we put them up there and they book within days, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because that, 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 that could be one, one solution for us. One thing that me and the wife were thinking about was just, um, you know, making a trip out of the whole situation ourselves. You know, um, you know we were just going to come in a day or two earlier to uh in 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 the area and just kind of hang out and just wait for the um for the rv to get there and go pick it up and then drive it back um that was first uh, um the first idea that we had um but the, uh, putting into account um all of the the drive time the, the the gas and all of that we weren't able to kind of get a clear picture of what the extra fees should be like um if we were to go or, or if we were move, to move forward with this uh, um, one-way pickup, how do you normal? How, how do you normally calculate that? If you guys were going to return it yourselves, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah, that's a great idea too. <clears throat> we have a, um, a husband-wife team, so I do RV coaching. I own a, an RV rental management franchise. I have, we have a whole bunch of stuff that we do in this industry. And so okay. one of my franchisees in, in Arizona, it's a husband wife team. They've got about 55 units that they manage. This is what they do full time. Uh -huh. uh, and they love road trips. So they offer one way rentals and they just kind of pick the ones they want to do, you know, like, Hey honey, yeah. do you want to you know, go to Vegas next weekend? Um, and then really what it comes down to what they found is it's really, is just, what is it worth to them? You know? Um, I mean, okay. you could sit and calculate your cost per mile based on what your figure, your average gallon per mile is on your RV and, and stuff like that. And, you know, what, what your time is worth, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it really comes down to, yeah, what is it worth to you? Like, does it sound like a fun excuse to come down to Florida for April for a couple of days and <laughs> it's all a business write off? Well, yep. then maybe you're not trying to charge top dollar to get it returned. You know, maybe the, the adventure is part of your your uh payoff you know part of the return yeah yeah, yeah. okay that, yeah that, 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 that's a good way to look at it exactly yeah do you uh does your work and life and children all that kind of schedules that allow you to the flexibility to do that or um for, for the most part uh m my wife works remotely um i'm i'm currently in between jobs um you know trying to find other things to supplement that um income so the RV comes uh -huh. in handy with that. Um, yeah. And, you know, the, the, the kid, we, we have the in-laws to, to be able to, to, to look after him for, for a few days if we were to skip town. So we, we do have the flexibility and the ability to be able to, 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 to take on something like this, which is why it was so intriguing when it came up. So that's why we wanted to know more about how we can possibly utilize this, uh, um, these type of bookings or at least cater to these kind of bookings and see how we can make it work for us. Yeah. Yeah. They're really growing in popularity, the one-way rentals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get a lot of international travel and, and stuff like that. And people want to travel one way. Yeah. And it's, if you can make it fun, then I'm like, yeah, what, it, go for it. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Uh, what other questions you had texted a couple questions um yeah um mo mostly for um the added <sighs> expenses you know how um having to fly down to go get the car or the the, the rv and having to book a you know an an an, 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 an uh, um an uber from the the airport to the actual location to go pick up the um the rv do 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 we shoulder those um, extra added uh, um, expenses or is that something that we would be able to pass on to the renter? 
Yeah, you know, that's definitely, it's definitely your call. You know, that's what I always tell people. It's your RV, so it's your call. What I would do is kind of feel out the renter a little bit and just okay. say, hey, <laughs> you can just say, hey, I, I, I called my coach, you know, in this in this business. And he said the way these transactions typically go is, you know, it's uh, it's approximately X amount of dollars, you know, per mile and you factor in everything. So you could just say, whatever, let's say you figure out it's 1800 bucks to do everything. You round uh -huh. it up to 2,500, throw some extra money in there for whatever. And just say, yeah, typically these kind of scenarios are around $2,500. I, I don't even know if that's something that is in your budget or not. And then let them answer that. Cause they might typically in these kind of scenarios where they they're doing these like extravagant trips, right? Pick it uh -huh. up here, drop it up there. They might say, oh yeah, 2,500 bucks. No problem. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. so you know, kind of uh, feel them out, and then if they, you know, try, are trying to hone that price in, well, then you can kind of go from there. But what I found is typically people that are wanting to do these more kind of extravagant experiences, uh, budgets usually not a huge concern for them. Oh, you know, because if they were if they were super budget friendly, well, then they're going to drive a car and sleep that, in the car true. or sleep at a motel or a bed bark, you know? So it's like, you might think of how you would take the trip, you know, especially like oh. you think, okay, I'm in between jobs right now. This sounds fun, but I'm trying to budget. So you kind of put your paradigm into their situation, you know, and like, all right, how can I, you know, keep my costs down? Yeah. Where they, they might be coming from a whole nother perspective of like me, for instance, when I travel or when I do things, like I'm the easiest upsell you'll find, you know, they're like, Hey, would you like the triple platinum <laughs> upgrade? You know, where we put pillows under your feet. I'm like, yes, I do want that. And I don't even ask yeah. how much it costs because I'm on I, vacation. I'm, I'm not worried about money when I'm on vacation, you know, that, that's so true. I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah. So that's not a factor, but you know, then like tonight we're at Applebee's for dinner and my wife's like, uh, I want to get a side of broccoli. I don't know. It was like $4 and she's debating it, but or, earlier today she's at the store and buying furniture you know so it's just uh interesting how we compartmentalize different types of transactions and add value to them or get cheap on them you know well it's all, it's all about the priorities right yeah yeah and so usually when it comes to vacation that's usually the budget's usually even budget friendly budget-minded people once they get on vacation then they let loose right it's like they kind of forget about it yeah. underway they, yeah they let loose they start buying the you know the little different things at the rest stops and this and that and they're at disney you know it's just that's just what happens we let loose and we check out of reality and you know let the credit card have some fun <laughs> we'll figure it out later right <laughs> yeah we'll figure it out we're already here right we're a thousand right. miles from home like, yep. let's not get cheap now you know so uh, um, yeah, I would just throw a number that's good five hundred dollars or more, a good twenty percent or more above what you think it would cost you, and okay. just kind of throw that at them. Just say, hey, this is, you know, I did some research and this is what this RV rental coach was telling me. Um, <laughs> uh, at least you know, it'll give me kind of an idea of of where to start. And uh, um, you know, a lot of the things that you had mentioned are kind of like on the pro side of me going ahead and doing this. But in your experience, what are kind of like the the negative part on doing a, a, a one way rental that you've seen so far? You know, honestly, there's really it's it's really no different than any other rental, except you're retrieving the unit. You know, mm -hmm. if you think about like travel trailers and people rent those out and they deliver them to the campsite for the renter. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's kind of the same thing, right? You bring it there and then later you go pick it up. It's like a it's a one way there, a one way back, you know, it's it's just it's just not your typical rental, so you start to think of okay, what are the different scenarios? Um mm -hmm. to try and throw out some negative things for you, the the biggest one that popped in my head is the unit being unattended, you know, for uh, more than I I forget. I don't do a lot of the day to day with my company i kind of work on the overall picture of everything um, okay. so i forget what outdoorsy's return inspection window is if it's 48 hours or 24 or 36 i um, think it's 48 hours 
Okay, so that to me would be one area to be, um, you know, caution to caution you on is, huh. all right, you know, you, you wouldn't want to be picking the RV up three days after they drop it at the dropping point because then yep. you're out of that 48 hour window. Uh, but mm. besides that, I mean, getting the keys, you know, unless you're physically going to be there to meet them and, and complete the return inspection form right there with them. I really don't see any concerns. Um, to me, I see an adventure, honestly. Like, that gets me excited. I, <laughs> we've actually been full-time RVers for almost five years. We're just oh, getting really? back into a house. Yeah, so we we love the RV lifestyle. Not Nice. It's, it's, it's something that me and the wife have been kind of uh, um, going back and forth on. Um, you know, that, I mentioned that I'm, I'm, between, I'm in between jobs, and, you know, it's one less responsibility that we have to have here you know, so we were we were thinking about maybe we could you know stay on the on 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 the RV life for a, you know a year or so and see how that feels like. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a blast. We had a we had a great time. We've got four kids. We homeschool. We've been all around the country a couple times, and uh, we we had a blast, man. That man, that 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 that's good to hear. I mean, the the more the more people we talk to, and the more people that 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 we we meet that's that's done you know the rv life um the more and more we we want to jump in and 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 experience it for ourselves yeah yeah it's a blast it's a great did you say you you have kids uh yeah we 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 have a two-year-old um our oldest one is 20 years old she's she's already moved out so um she don't she don't she don't really count too much but yeah we we, uh -huh. we, we do have a, a, a little one Oh yeah. Yeah. See, I've got, um, a six year old, six, eight, 12 and 14. And my six year old has been in an RV since about she was one. So wow. it's, uh, I mean, she's lived most of her life, uh, in an RV. So we're, we're literally getting a, uh, back into a home here in about three weeks. We actually bought a home during COVID. We're uh -huh. like, okay, we, we're getting back into a home. We were in it for like three weeks and we were, it just wasn't us. We did. It was crazy, but it was like, right. We went from RVing to like right inside an association where you got all these rules and all, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so, yeah, but yeah, you definitely won't regret it, man. You'll create some great memories and uh, who knows, you know, you get out and hit the road and stuff and get inspired and, you know, God might give you a cool idea for your next, you know, step in your career or, or starting a business or whatever yeah no um we, we 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 like i said there's something that we've been seriously considering and again it's just the, the more people we talk to the more the more close the, the closer we get to, to just pulling yeah. the trigger and like, you know what let's just do it yeah yeah i i highly recommend it we had a blast for sure nice. we have actually say once our kids are out yeah, my wife and I will go right back into an RV. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we'll we'll literally jump back into a Class A with a trailer and a little car in it. And, there you go. You know, maybe a little motorcycle, and we just we love the lifestyle, and just being around all the people, and you know, it's just it's a blast. Yeah. Um. Quick. A uh, quick question for you. Um. How many How many units do you do you manage, and do you see a difference in, um people renting a, a, a motorhome or a fifth wheel, which one do they prefer more? Cause me and the wife's thinking about, you know, scaling and you uh -huh. know, the next, next unit that we're looking at, you know, we, 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 we haven't figured out what that is, but we do want to add at least another unit to our, to our fleet. Okay. Yeah. So we, we actually have several hundred all around the country. So we've got all, all the kinds that you can have. Um, and really, you know, it's, it's kind of like almost like two different answers I need to give you because, you know, as far as popularity, I mean, that comes down to really like the most popular units out there, um, I believe are the class B's class B's, uh, okay. but those are also, you know, you can spend up to a hundred grand on them and they're mm -hmm. very niche. Um, and you get a very high end renter, you know, you can get three, $400 or sometimes more a night on the class B's, mm -hmm. um, and your renters, your average rental, you know, it could be 10, 15 days. 
So okay. you, you get really long rentals, people that are very outdoorsy, retired professionals, um, you know, so those are very popular. Um, but, you know, the more common popular ones are like the drivable class C's, preferably with like a bunkhouse in them. Uh, but, you know, when people ask me that question, like, well, what's the best ROI? You know, what's the best, you know, I'm scaling. I'm like, well, the best ROI that I ever had was a, a pop-up that I bought for $1,200 that I rented for $80 a night, you know, and it rent for 80 nights a summer. That was my best ROI. Really? You know, cause, okay. cause, cause I bought it for $1,200 cash. People could pull yep. up and hook it up to their van or their truck. It didn't have an air conditioner, very minimal things to fix. So like return on investment, but uh -huh. you know, um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of a goofy one. I mean, the towable travel trailers that are the bunkhouse, those are very popular. Uh, what do you guys have? Uh, we got a class C, um, 29 foot, uh, Sun Seeker um, by Forest River. Sun Seeker, okay. Is it the bunkhouse style? Um, uh, yeah, it has the um, it has the the bunk bed over the uh, the cab. The bed over the cab. Okay. All right. Yep. So the bunk bed style I'm talking about, it's like literally there's a set of bunk beds in the hallway. Oh yeah. The, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah those not... are real popular. Um, okay. <clears throat> but you know, honestly, I'm a I'm a huge proponent of RV management. Um, and honestly, that when I started doing this in 2016, that was the idea that God told me was use other people's assets, OPRV, other people's RVs, because it doesn't matter what's going on with the economy. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a slow season or a slow month, even for that fact. You don't have the payments, you don't have the insurance, you don't have the repairs, you don't have the storage. You literally have none of that overhead. Um, and you can scale quickly because it's, I mean, we have, we just had a franchise start in Texas several weeks ago and I think they already got like eight units. Um, really? The, the demand for management out there is insane um, because especially during COVID, I mean, RV sales, went through the roof during COVID. And now it's kind of like a timeshare. All these people are like over it and they're back to traveling internationally like they used to do and all that kind of stuff. And it's hard to even get a campsite because, you know, camping is so popular now. Uh, <clears throat> we found RV management is, and I, I'll buy units and rent them for a month or two and sell them because you kind of fall into that when you get into the management side. You uh -huh. fall into people saying, hey, I just want to get rid of this unit. And so, you know, you give them 10, 12 grand for a fifteen, twenty thousand dollar unit, and they're happy to just get out of it and be done with it. You rent uh -huh. it out for two, three months and make four or five grand and then turn around and sell it and make four or five grand. Um, so it kind of opens you up to several different avenues of revenue. Okay. Well, if if one of those deals come along your way and you need somebody to you know, so take a look at it, you know, keep me in mind. And like I said, we're, we're, we're looking to, we're looking to scale. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to, to, to get with people such as yourself that, that are, um, seasoned, uh, um, individuals that know what they're doing in this, in this, uh, um, industry. And, you know, we're just trying to latch on to somebody that could, that could kind of mentor us and, and, and guide us in the right direction. That's good, man. I'm proud of you for doing that, uh, for taking the steps to kind of get the wisdom from others. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm the opposite. I jump into something and then I learn from all my mistakes. And uh, <laughs> so I appreciate that, that quality that you have. You know what, actually, I want to do for you guys. I've got our, so we're literally launching a whole uh, membership course it's called okay. uh, the R3, the RV rental resource. And it's training, it's videos, it's coaching, community. We've got videos, templates. It's literally, it's everything. It's a business in a box. It's a whole community. From setting okay. up an LLC to yeah. customer service to walkthroughs. It's a program that we're releasing. It's um, $97 a month or $9.97 for the year. I want to give you a, a free one-year membership to it. I, I'm, hey, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. 
Awesome. I think it would really bless you guys. And uh, maybe, uh, yeah, it'll definitely add some value and, you know, help you guys decide as you keep walking through your journey. And who knows, maybe you, this might help get you some clarity on your next venture. The, I, I, I do appreciate that. And, and I know for, I know there was a reason why it was, you were the first one to, to answer my question on the, uh, on, on, on the community that we have. And, I really appreciate you taking the time and, and, and walking me through this. And again, I, it, at least with this conversation that we ha I have with you, uh, it's given me some clarity on how we should move forward, especially within this uh, um, booking. But, um, you know, I look forward to, to learning more from you and, and, and hopefully I, I, I get to pick up a couple more things from you. Oh, yeah. We're going to load you up with a whole bunch of knowledge. You'll I, be I, the I, six I, months from I, now, I, you'll be coaching people. Uh, I'll be the sponge. I'll be that sponge. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, what I'll do here is uh, once we get off this Zoom call, if you want to message me your email address, we'll do um, we're going to launch here in about two weeks will be the okay. official launch of the membership program. And we'll put you in as one of the first members and uh, and walk you through it. Oh, man, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're awesome. You're awesome. You're welcome, brother. Uh, have a good night, and we'll be uh, chatting with you soon, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Take it easy now. All right. Thanks, man. You too. Bye. Bye.